Come on, stand to your feet and let's give God praise. Has already been exhibited in this room. He's worthy. We serve an able God in spite of how it looks. He's a God that's fit for all kind of weather. And we thank him for his goodness and for his glory. Thank him. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. We give thanks to him and we bless his name that he have allowed us to tabernacle in this place. Uh, often there are hiccups and there are setbacks and that's the reason that we are moving on a later than ever. Uh, but we're here by God's grace. And I thank him. Can anybody thank him for another week and another day that the Lord has blessed you? Amen. Come on, let's pray. Father, we do bless you and we honor you. We thank you for your significance. When we say significance, God, what you've given us may not have been what we wanted, but it was everything we needed. And God, we know that you're the kind of God that know how to handle us when we don't know how to handle ourselves. And so we come in this place as we tabernacle, we say thank you. Thank you for your goodness, for your kindness, and for your loving peace. And we ask now, God, as we tabernacle in this place, we pray that there might be a different reflection than what we see from the outside. It's cloudy, it's gloomy, it's rainy on this outside. But there is the sun shining in this room today. And we ask you, God, to let us see him in the fullness of who he is. We pray that you would raise and elevate our worship today. That we might give you all glory until the point that something breaks within. I need a breakthrough today, God. I need something that's bigger than me. I need something, God, that's greater than myself. And I'm not the only one in the room, God, that needs that. But so we're going to give you praise. For we've been told time and time again that when praises go up, blessings come down. We look to see your blessings today. Breathe on us and have magnify yourself in this place, God, as we give you grace to each other. Give grace to us and let your name, God, be upon us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Come on, put your hands together and let's bless the Lord. The choir will come now and they will, they will bless us. Anyhow. How many are thankful for God's love? Praise God. Praise God. Yes, God. Yes, God. All the love of God. Jesus that's lifted us up and pulled us up and yes. carried us through. God, we thank you God. for your love. Thank you. Thank you. I was sinking, sinking so deep in the sea. Far from Far from the peaceful shore, I was sinking, sinking so deep in the sea. I was sinking, sinking to rise no more. Oh, Heard my despairing cry. Oh, from the waters, he lifted me. And now, now, safe in my Sure, I was sinking, sinking so deep. 
deep in sin, yes I was, and I was sinking, sinking to rise no more. Oh. Oh, and now, now 
lifted me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. The Lord bless you. Amen. You know, it's easy. It's easy to live in a world where we take everything for granted. We lay down at night with the automatic expectation that we're going to get up in the morning. And we think we deserve it. We go through the day and we think ain't nothing going to happen to us because we are walking that way. And the truth is, God's given you grace for your path. He's given you mercies along the way. And somebody say, had it not been for the Lord who was on our side, don't you know trouble would have eaten you up, sin would have destroyed you, and you would have destroyed yourself. Aren't you glad that God is keeping your mind? He's keeping your spirit. He's, he's putting love lifting you. It's not anything else, but God has loved you. And he's done what no other power can do. He's keeping you. And every now and then, you ought to get happy about the fact that when mama couldn't keep me, when daddy couldn't do it, when my children couldn't bless me, God kept, kept his hands on me and he lifted me. When the doctor said no, he said yes. I wish I had somebody in the room that know what I'm talking about. This is more than church this morning. This is a thank you to him for how good he's been in your life. You ought to bless the Lord because he's worthy. And he's more than able. I don't know about you, but, but is there anybody in this room, anybody in this room, who got in a situation that was so bad that you thought you were going to lose your mind? It was so tough that you couldn't see how you were going to get out of it. And just like, just like a cloud that, that got blew out of the way, God came in and motioned and moved it and the sun began to shine on your life. And you looked up and said, it's going to be all right. Is there anybody got a, it's going to be all right, praise? You know how bad it is, but it's going to be all right. Because God has seen that he will be with us and he'll never leave us, never forsake us. Oh, I wish I had a praiser in the room that know that you are only here by God's grace. By God's mercy, you are who you are. You are who you are because God has said it. Had it not been that the devil would have destroyed you, but God made a way out of nowhere. the blessing in the room and we praise him we lift him up we thank him we thank him you know so much i can thank god for so much and for some of you can i you say you don't have a reason well that ain't me no i can't get excited like that i i, I try to hold my composure i try to do all that but let me tell you something you walked away from God, but God never walked away from you. He knew if he had left you alone, you would have tore up everything around you. You stayed out of church. You stayed everywhere else and went everywhere you wanted to go, and you never knew what you were going into. But God, with his good self, said that you're walking because that's my child. You need to know that in spite of your badness, God has been good to you. And the reason you ought to thank him because when you couldn't see your way, he still made a way. Y'all, y'all missing me today. But I just know that he, he deserves our praise, everybody. You ain't so cool that you can't give him glory. You ain't so cool that you can't thank him. You ain't all of that that you can't praise him. But the Lord has been good. Uh, you know what? I, I think we just need about a 15 second praise just to give God everything you got. Can we just bless the Lord? Come on, you ain't gonna go to hell if you press it.
Hey, you know, I promise you, ain't that gonna happen bad to you if you if you bless it. You see, the devil don't want you to praise. That's why you ought to praise. He don't want you to give him glory. That's why you ought to give him glory. Ain't nobody here able to judge you when you think about how good he is. Something's going to happen in your life and you're going to wish you had a praise God when you had a chance. You're going to wish you had a blessed him when you could have. It's terrible to be in a position till we want to give God thanks and praise and you won't be able to do it except with restraint. God has been good to you. That's why every time you come into the Lord's house, you ought to feel free. And if you ain't free, you ought to get yourself free. You ought to shake yourself free until God gives you what it takes to give him glory and to give him honor. But I promise you, one thing about it, if you don't appreciate him, you, you will not praise him. But when you think about how good he's been, I don't care where, how, how far you climbed up the ladder, you didn't get there by yourself. And that's why you ought to thank God every step of the way. You got to remember that you were down. Well, you were nobody until God decided to make you somebody. And you're only somebody because he moved you in that direction. But then God will show you when you get so high, if he have to, if he you decide you want to make it without him, he'll withdraw himself and let you try to make it on your own. And I promise you, you don't want to be by yourself. That's why I praise him every time you can. Give him glory while you can. Amen. Amen. God bless you today. Amen. Amen. We give God certainly glory and praise and we welcome our TV and our Facebook audience that might be watching us. Welcome to the First Baptist Church Lundell worship and we're grateful to God for his goodness and to you our members that's in the congregation today. It's so good to be here. We thank God for his goodness. You know what? I'm so glad I'm saved. I just thank God I'm saved. I didn't say I did everything right. I said I'm saved. I didn't think I didn't have some mess ups. But I'm saved. You ought to thank the Lord you're saved. You ought to thank your Lord you're under his blood. Oh, I feel something in this room right now. I thank God that he didn't do to me what I've done to him. He's been good to us. And that's why we ought to bless his name. That's why we ought to honor him. That's how why we ought to lift him up. Forget about the others. Forget about what they're saying about you. What do you say about God? And when I think about Jesus and all he's done for me, my soul cries, hallelujah. Somebody, Mama used to sing the song, what you think about Jesus? He's a friend of mine. I, I don't know about you, but he's a friend of mine. And I thank him for his goodness. I thank him for his glory. Amen. I promise you, I'm trying to move on. But today, I just thank the Lord. I just, I just praise him. I praise him for how he deals with us. And, and you know, I want to say this. Ain't no way in the world 
you can stay out of order and be with God. Because a God will burden you all day and all night and he'll speak to you. He'll, he'll talk to you about things about your own soul. And you see, and, and you know, and you, let me tell you how you know God loves you. Because those he loves, he chastises. Amen. And he chastises. And, and if something ain't working good in your life, you feel like God has forgotten you, he's only trying to chastise and tell you that there's something you need to take note of in your life. I'm just grateful today. Amen. Let me move on uh, quickly and say that I'm appreciative to God for his goodness and for his glory and to you. Uh, let me remind us that uh, uh, someone said you didn't say anything about black history. Huh? Some things we're not going to just have to do because we've done it before. But on the next two Sundays, I'm going to ask you that whether you do old timey wear on next Sunday, that will be great. On the fourth Sunday, we'll be having African Heritage Day. And we have Af African attire. We do it on the fourth Sunday. On the fourth Sunday, we will have a speaker with us and also our youth. I'm going to ask you to bring every young person you can uh, find for the next couple of Sundays, uh, particularly on the fourth Sunday. The fourth Sunday, we got a very special treat for them. We got a great puppet play that we're going to do. Hold my mule. Amen. And so that's on the fourth Sunday. And that's before the message. We have a great, uh, great young man who is steep in African American history in the person of uh, Brother Ronald Hare, who just released two books, one children's books with African American studies, uh, and then another on African American heritage that's also include our own community. And you just need to see, you just need to be here on that fourth Sunday. We're looking to have a grand and a glorious time. So on the next two Sundays, next week, if you can do old timey, that would be great. And then do uh, uh, African Heritage on the fourth Sunday. And we're looking to have a grand time. Don't forget the third Sunday in March is our church anniversary. Isn't it wonderful? And that's, let me see. Let me see. Okay, this is 22. This will be our 98th year as a church that God has blessed. 98 years. What a wonderful, what a wonderful blessing there is. And you know, the devil said we wouldn't make it. Said we wouldn't be here today. Said we'd never amount to anything. But I'm glad to say that we're on our way. Amen. And we're growing more and more every day. And the song say, there were many who started out with me, but now they're going astray. But we're still holding on. How about that? Amen. We thank God for his goodness. We thank him for his blessings. So, let me tell you what I see. I see this, I see the church coming back in such a way with a different people. I know uh, it's easy to feel that we won't get there, but God is blessing us. Let me say a couple other things here is that uh, we are, we asking you to dedicate yourself back to God. Nobody can make you love him. Nobody can make you appreciate him. But when you think about what he's done, please find reason to give him glory. Please find reason to give him praise. He's blessed us. The church now is going to have to take an introspective look at itself. See where we are and see where we're going. Remember, by August, by April the 17th, our challenge in December was that we reach 200 people for Jesus Christ. That means if everybody would speak to one person, lead one person to come to Christ, wouldn't take long to every one of us would see something great being realized. You'd have in you the capacity to lead folk to Jesus. You do. And that's the reason you are where you are. 
you say, well, you know, I can't speak like others, but I promise you that you can have influence on anyone. But you got to have the desire and the will of God to do what's right and to do what's proper. So please, take your time. Uh, all you're doing is checking out your Christianity. If you're really who you say you are in Christ, all you can do is tell your story. Tell how he saved you. And there's somebody akin to you who realized that that was my story. I'll tell folk about how the Lord saved me from drugs. Can I, is there anybody else in the room that got saved from drugs? All right, so when you raise your hand, you see what you need to realize is that my story is your story. Your story is my story. And every time you share with somebody else, you're sharing a story. Amen. So let's get involved in leading others to Christ. There's so much that we need to do. And we're looking for a great time in the name of the Lord. Come on, let's bless the Lord while the choir comes back. God a praise. Yeah. Today was dressed down, David. I put on my heels so I could shout good. Because God has been good to me. Testify, testify. Hallelujah. God is great. When you start to see seeds that's been sown and you start to see the harvest, Hallelujah. you ought to give God some praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah for the harvest. God is great. Our God is great. And greatly to be praised. I don't see how we coming in this house and not giving him the best praise. Because he's great. And greatly to be praised.
I think we still, some of us are still holding back and giving God praise and glory. Can you just, can we just walk down back in memory lane and let us sing just a minute of old songs just to give God some praise and I promise you, we're going to get on to the word of God. But can you just come on, clap your hands, put your hands together. Let's go back in church and sing a song like this here. Praise the Lord, everybody.
Lord and we bless you. I stand now at this sacred desk asking that you would take us and purpose us in your will. Allow now the diadems of heaven to fall fresh and may your word be magnified in this place. Be the forgiver of my sins, blot out of every transgressions and speak today that we might hear you and help us to move in your peace. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Immediately to the word of God in the book of Genesis, chapter number 19. So many other references that's in this text. I know that our time uh, was late today. And we're already late, but we're going to move, as God would say, in the book of Genesis chapter 19, and beginning at verse number 12, and I want to read down to perhaps verse number 22. This entails the story of Lot. The word said, the two men said to Lot, do you have anyone else here? Sons-in-laws, sons or daughters, or anyone else in the city who belongs to you? Get them out of here because we are going to destroy this place. The outcry to, to the Lord against uh, his people is so great that he has sent us to destroy it. So Lot went out and spoke to his son-in-laws who were pledged to marry his daughters. He said, hurry and get up. Get out of this place. Get up, get up out of this place because the Lord is about to destroy the city. But his sons-in-laws thought he was joking. With the coming of the dawn, the angels urged Lot saying, hurry. Take your wife and your daughters who are here or you will be swept away when the city is punished. When he hesitated, the men grabbed his hand and the hands of his wife and of his daughters and led them safely out of the city for the Lord was merciful to them. As soon as they had brought them out, one of them said, uh, flee for your lives. Don't look back and don't stop anywhere in the plain. Flee to the mountains or you will be swept away. But Lot said to him, to say to them, No, my lords, please. Your servant has your servant has found favor in your eyes, and you have shown great kindness to me in sparing my life. But I can't flee to the mountains. This disaster will overtake me and I'll die. Look, there is a town near enough to run to. It is small. Let me flee to it. It is very small, isn't it? Then my life will be spared. He said to them, very well. He said to him, very well. I will grant this request too. I will not overthrow the town you speak of. But flee there quickly, because I cannot do anything until you reach it. This is why the town is called Zor. May the Lord bless this word. I want to look at this today. With the aid of the Holy Spirit and your prayers, I want to talk about protected in the midst of it all protected in the middle or in the midst of it all. This morning, I want to ask you a question. Are you a starter or a finisher? Are you a starter 
or a finisher. I acknowledge the fact that you can't start, you can't finish until you start. Uh, and that there are many people who plan to start something but never get around to it. And as, I, and as it relates to our relationship with Christ, I want to make the assumption that all of us have started in this race, but we have not finished it. I, 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 I'm reminded today, and I want to remind you of this story of Lot's wife, how after how she had made it to safely to the, from the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah, only to turn around and look back at the destruction turning into a pillar of salt. She made it out, but she didn't finish. In this instance, she had started, but she could not, was not able to finish. The cost of her disobedience was her life. That's how serious life is. In addition to this story, remember what Jesus told his disciples in Matthew uh, chapter 24. Jesus said, in the last days in which we're now living in, many will fall away. That's what he said. But please understand that you can never fall away from something if you've never been attached to it. And there are a lot of people who talk about they are falling away, but the truth of the matter is they are not falling. They was never attached. Jesus made it clear that there was, there will be some who will be walking with him and stop. Just as some of his disciples did when, they, when he walked upon the earth. If you recall, these disciples followed him until they were offended in some of his teachings. And they left him. As a matter of fact, he even raised the question to his own intimate disciples. Will you also go with them? And the first thing they said, where can we go? Only you have the words to eternal life. Uh, in the last days. We will have people who will walk away from the faith. And no matter how you try to convince them and tell them they need to stay, they're going to walk. And no, the preacher can't turn them around. No, you can't put on a program that will attract them. You can't do anything that's going to make them satisfied. Nothing but Christ himself can overturn that situation. Uh, they started, there are those who started in the race, but will not finish it. In fact, John said, they came out from among us, but they were never of us. If you are concerned about whether this will happen to you, I want you to take heart this morning because God has given us a promise of protection in the midst of a world that's going to hell all around us. This week, we'll examine here a uh, lot from the viewpoint of a, of a remaining a righteous man in the midst of wickedness. Remember, when God commanded Abraham to leave his home and his family, Abraham took Lot along with him. And I got a personal uh, conversation about that because I feel personally uh, that this would be a problem. When God told him not to take anybody, but he still takes Lot. And if you will notice, uh, God told him to leave his kindred, and but he drug Lot along with him. And the dispute came when his people, uh, Abraham's people and Lot's people, began to fight. I feel that maybe Lot should have stayed in Haram. But the good thing is both Abraham and Lot had possessions uh, after they left Egypt, and even though they grew, things grew so well, both were being blessed. And you see, I believe Lot was only blessed because it was Abraham. And you got to understand that sometimes you hang around with folk that can be your blessings or your curses. You better learn how to decipher how to hang on. 
uh, because in the process here, uh, uh, Abraham had convinced Lot that you have to remain righteous. Now, notice that they didn't argue, but their cattlemen did. There was a fight because there was not uh, enough territory for all of them, and when they decided that what we are going to do, we're going to divide, you decide where you want to go, uh, Lot, and I'll take the other side, and Lot looked towards Sodom, and he moved to Sodom. There he dwelt in Sodom and Gomorrah. Uh, and now I want you to turn with me back to, the, to Genesis 18 a minute because I want to begin reading here uh, beginning uh, at verse number 32 because it says, then he said, uh, I want you to look at, first of all at the challenge. You, well, you got to see this here. That's the challenge that we got to know how to negotiate for a soul. You see, Lot is saved uh, 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 by because of Abraham. And yet, he's in a bad place, and he's in terrible surroundings. But you got to realize that you got loved ones that's in bad places. Sin is all around them, but how many know God can keep them in the midst of that? Oh, yes. So you got to, the first thing you got to learn how to do is to, how to, to challenge and negotiate for a soul. Uh, look at the text. This text says, uh, in, in verse number 32 in chapter 18, it says, Then he said, Oh, my Lord, be not angry. I shall speak only this once. Suppose ten are found there. And he said, I will not destroy it on account of ten. As soon as he had finished speaking to Abraham, the Lord departed. And Abraham returned to his place. Now the two angels came to Sodom in the evening as Lot was sitting in the gate. And when he saw them, he arose to meet them and bowed down with his face to the ground. And he said, now behold my words, please turn aside uh, into a, your servant's house and spend the night and wash your feet. Then you will rise early and go, your, go on your way. They said, however, no. We will not spend the night, uh, we, no, we, but we will spend the night in the square. Yet he urged them strongly. So they turned aside to him and entered his house. And he prepared a feast for them and baked unleavened bread, and they ate. Before they lay down, the men of the city, listen, the men of Sodom surrounded the house, both young and old, all the people from every quarter. And they called to Lot and said to him, where are the men who came to you tonight? Bring them out to us that we may have relations with them. Listen to this. But Lot told him, listen, Lot went out, went out, to, the, went out to them at the doorway and shut the door behind him and said, please, my brothers, do not act wicked, wickedly. Now, behold, I have two daughters, listen, who have not had relations with man. I'm going to come back to that in a minute. Please let me bring them out to you and do to them whatever you like. Only do nothing to these men, insomuch as they have come under, uh, under the shelter of my roof. But they said, stand aside. Furthermore, they said, uh, this one came in as an alien, and already he's acting like a judge. Now, we will treat you worse than them. So they pressed hard against Lot and came near to break down the door. But the men reached out their hands and brought Lot into the house. And then, and with them, they shut the door. Now, I want to look at this passage because here is something that we see. Now, remember, Lot's soul has been negotiated. When we first see these angels going to Abraham, the Bible says there was three. And these three were representative of the Lord, of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Now, remember he sits down, he feeds them, 
He kills things for them, and, and now they eat. But I want you to look here now. He negotiates with them. And remember he said, I got, uh, I got a, a nephew or almost like a brother who is down in Sodom. Don't destroy the city. Now, even though we pick it up when he gets down to number 10, he starts out negotiating. First of all, if you can find 50 in the city. He goes down, he reduces it by five. Can you find 45? If you find 30, if you find 20, then he said, if you find 10. And he said, well, God said, if you find, if I can find 10, I'll spare the whole city. What happens when God looks in Londale and say, if I can find 10 folk who are on fire for me, I'll save the whole city. Let's look here at, Ab at what Abraham did and why once he found out God's plan to destroy the city, how Abraham, uh, he, he told him about Sodom and Gomorrah and how he went and how he saved them. And Abraham, as he began to negotiate with God, I can say, uh, it was actually, somebody even said that it's, it, it was the type of Jesus who showed up to speak to him. And asked him about saving the cities. He reduced it all the way down. And now notice here. But now even though when God's getting ready to say, hey, I'm going to save them. And it goes down. Abraham, uh, he goes down. And now the focus is on Lot as he stands in the door. Having saved these men. Asked them to come in and beg them to stay at his house. Uh, look at this story. Uh, the story uh, in a nutshell is that when he gets to the place, uh, he, he's under their command. And uh, Lot began to say to them, uh, the angels say, I, the whole thing is I'm here to save you because the righteousness that's connected to your life because of Abraham, I'm going to save your house. And everybody that's in it, I want you to get them because early in the morning, we got to get out of this city. But now notice here, uh, the men came to him. And let's, uh, when we look at verse number nine, as we reread it, it says, but they said, stand aside. They told Lot, get over. We want the men you got in the house. Uh-huh. So stand aside. And furthermore, they said, this one here, this man who come to us, he's an alien anyway. As a matter of fact, he don't even belong in our city. And he act like he's somebody's judge already. Let me tell you, when you get righteous, folk will begin to speak to you like you are nobody. And they told him, Lot ain't nobody. Uh, he's trying to be a judge over us. And let me tell you what we'll do to you, man. We'll take you and do worse to you than we'll do to the men in the house. You got to understand that you got to stand your ground when you're a child of God. Because the devil wants to destroy you. And remember, look what they asked for. They said, give us these two. We want to have relationships with them. We want to have sex with these men. Oh, beloved, we live in a mean world where homosexuality ain't new. It is not something that just took off all of a sudden. But you got to realize that it is an imp implementation that the devil has used to set up to corrupt and kill the minds to make man not be what God intended him to be. He make a woman to be not what God intended her to be. But now it's confused. We're so confused. We don't know what to stand for. So they pressed hard against Lot and they came to try to break down the door. And before they could get him out, the angels said, we better save him because he can't stand by himself. And ain't it good to know when you can't stand by yourself, God still got somebody. The angels reached out and pulled Lot back in the house and been able to throw something in the city that they walked around blind. But let me tell you something. Uh, here they were. Now, but when I look at this story of uh, 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 Reverend Parks, I get concerned because you got to look at the character of, uh, to, you got to have the kind of character. You got to know how to navigate through sinfulness. The sin was everywhere. But now, notice here, it said Lot was righteous. But then, <laughs> I'm disturbed. This is one of the stories that really get to me. Because here it was. These men in the city, Lot had two daughters. And these daughters 
were married to son-in-law. But notice what the text say. Lot went out and said, I got two daughters that's never been touched by a man. Two daughters with husbands? But the husband don't want them. No, they, didn't, they had no relationships with their husbands. They're having relationships with men. And how do we know? Because... Let me get back to that in a minute. He remained righteous. Lot did, even though he was surrounded by wickedness. It was everywhere, and Lot moved to the city uh, whose moral compass was the opposite of his. And yet, he did not try to fit in. Now, I want you to see this. Where out of all the pressure that was on Lot, Lot never caved in to be a homosexual. Maybe I should have said that word. He kept loving his wife, but not having relations with men. That's what they're saying. Lot moved to the city, and in spite of the moral compass, and, 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 and yet uh, he, did not, he, didn't try, he didn't try to fit in. He did not allow himself to assimilate into the culture so that he started uh, doing what they were doing. According to the men, he remained an alien to them. In other words, he ain't one of us. He, uh, he think he a judge. He think you're better than everybody else. Look out. Whenever you stand for righteousness sake and you don't put up with the foolishness that everybody else puts up with, they're going to say you try to be new. You try to be something that you're not, but you got to understand the fact that you are a child of God and anybody just can't be God's child. That's, that's, that is the thing that you got to walk with to be a servant of God. You got to be able to have him in your heart and let him be able to rule in your life. You got to have this mind in you that is also in Christ Jesus. And the first thing that he did, he would not bow, even though they tried to get him. But have you noticed that even though he was in the city alone, nobody could put a hand on him? That's the good stuff when you belong to God. When you stand in righteousness, you will stand up even though it seems like all the hell is bringing around you. It may touch you, it may come around you, but it can't touch you. The good news is that the devil may try to get you, but he always starts falls short. He can't destroy who you are. I don't care. He can lost the bullet, but the bullet will fall before it hits your chest. God always has a way of stopping it. If you want to be stopped. Yeah. Uh, Lot knew God. Uh, and it's very important to know that he knew God. And, 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 and if he had chosen to, uh, to participate in that lifestyle, uh, he would have been destroyed with the rest of the inhabitants. And that's important. You better learn to separate yourself. I did hear Jesus, I hear him echoing saying that you need to come out from among them. Be ye separate. If you're going to be separate, you got to stop hanging out with stuff that ain't saved. Uh-oh. It ain't got to do with homosexuality at this point. It's got to deal with your spirit. You got to understand that your spirit is up for grabs. And the devil want to be able to contaminate it if you can. If you think it's all right, I can hang out with them and do what I want to do. But you got to realize that there's a spirit that takes over. What about Lot? You remember he had all kind of possessions. He left and he said, you ain't got time to get nothing. Get up and get your family and let's go. He pulled them out. And remember, what about his stuff? All the stuff he had, he let go. Can I tell you that there are some stuff you better get your hands off before it kill you? You're trying to hold on to some stuff that God's trying to free you from. And you think you got to have it. You better learn how to let some stuff go. I hope I got somebody here. Uh, he never strayed from his belief in God. And now, jumping over to 2 Peter uh, chapter 2, I, I, I want you to see what Peter said uh, about Lot. He would only say, for if God did not spare angels when they sinned, but cast them in, 
and to hell and committed them to the pits of darkness reserved for judgment and did not spare the ancient world but preserved Noah, a preacher of righteousness with seven others when he brought a flood upon the world of the ungodly. And if he uh, com commended uh, uh, and, and if he condemned the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah to destruction by reducing them to ashes, having made them a, an example to those who would live godly lives thereafter, and if he rescued righteous Noah, uh, excuse me, righteous Lot, oppressed by the sensual conduct of unprincipled men, for by what he saw and heard uh, that righteous man while living among them felt his righteousness, he felt his righteous soul tormented day after day by the lawless deeds. Then the Lord knows how to rescue the ungodly from temptation and to keep, their, keep the unrighteous under punishment, for, uh, under punishment for the day of judgment. In other words, what he's saying here, if God knows how to take care of his and pull you among the stuff that's around you and take care of you, then he knows how to take care of you. But notice why he destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. He said he done it for those who will come after him to let you know if, if you live wrongly, I'm going to destroy you. We got to learn to tell folk the truth. If you play in sin, you're going to die. And if you die, you're on your way to hell. Because you got to know who the Lord is. And you got to understand, he didn't mind telling them that I'm going to destroy this city. And you say, that can't be God. He's a loving God. Yes, he is. I got too many folk who are living immoral lives and began to say, well, you know, God loves everybody. Yeah, he loved you enough to kill you before he messed up for everybody else. He loved you enough. He loved me enough to make sure that whatever gets in my way, he'll move it out. And that's the beautiful thing about it. Either you're going to follow him or you're going to die because you don't love him. Uh-oh. You see, Peter walks the reader through the historical analysis of how God dealt with the widespread sins of the world. He, he talked about how God dealt with angels who rebelled against him. He talks about how he dealt with the, the people around Noah who would not believe that God was about to destroy them. He went on to tell, talk about how he destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah because the immorality was of such that nobody believed God. Hold on, let me stop a minute because every time I see uh, the kind of living that gets so gross till it don't bother people who love God, God is forced to do something. And you got to understand, there are too many of us who claim that we love folk, but we are okay and clapping our hands for those who are living immortally, those who are living wrongly, and we're saying it's all right. And many of us are putting our arms around them, and God said that can't happen. You can't happen. You can't live in sin. And okay, when God said come out from among them, you can't hang among them if you're going to come out. Too many folk coming out the closet, stay in. Ain't nobody asked you to come out. If I was you, I'd try to live as long as I could, free. Because once I've come out, I'm condemned. Y'all don't want to talk about that, but that's fine. What he demonstrates is a pattern of how God has dealt with and will deal with sin. Whether we know it or not, God is consistent. Peter says that what God has done in the past is an example for those who will live ungodly lives in the future. Yeah. Well, let me tell you something. I don't care whether it's me or you. When we fall away from God and get out of harmony with God, we get ourselves in some dangerous territory. And, uh, and then again, now, now focus again on, on what Peter said about Lot in verse number 7 through 9. He says, and if he rescued righteous Lot, oppressed by the sensual conduct of unprincipled men, for by what he saw and heard that that righteous man, while living among them, felt his righteous soul uh, tormented day after day by the lawless deeds. In other words, Lot was so torn up by what he saw. He was tortured by the same stuff. And remember, it wasn't just outside his door. It was in his house. 
his son-in-laws, remember? Can I go back to them? Because here they are, and God is about to be able to, to save Noah's house, brings them out of the city, and say, what I want you to do, I want you to go and get your daughters and get your son-in-laws. I'm going to pray. I'm going to save them. I'm going to pull them out of the city before it's destroyed. Because number one, I promised Abraham. And secondly, I promised that the righteous would not perish. And so he got ready to bring them out. And when he go talk to his son-in-laws, the first thing the son-in-laws did, they laughed at him. Man, you must be crazy. We ain't getting out of this city. Ain't no way in the world I'm getting out of here. And then what they, they decided that I'm going to hang tight where I am. I'm going to do what I want to do, and we don't believe it because, you see, we ain't leaving the city. This is a good city. Sin is pleasurable. And it'll hold you until you die. Now, notice here, uh, they stayed, and, and the angel said, get up. If they don't want to go, leave them. He gets up, and he grabbed them, and notice, like some of us going to church on Sunday, you know how we slow around? Trying to get there. The angel saying, we ain't got time to wait. I don't care what you got. He reached and grabbed them by the hand, the Bible say, and drug them out. And some of us need to be drugged toward God. Some of us are hanging around saying we love him, but we got to, we, you always got to be drugged. You got to make you do anything for God. Some of us, if God going to save you, you ought to get in a hurry. You ought to get up and run on your own. You ought not be waiting on somebody else to ask, to ask you. Because if God say, I'm ready to save you, you ought to get into heaven. You know, if God came by this morning and say, I'm bringing a, 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 a busload right now. Those who are going to go to heaven because I'm going to destroy the earth. And there will be some of us say, well, I'm going to wait till the earth destroy. Not me. I said, can I have the first seat? If the bus going to glory, I want to be on it. What about you? And notice here. He began to say to them, now, I uh, notice here. He gets him and he pulls them out. And the, thing, and, and the thing you got to realize is, and let me close by telling you that uh, not only, as I say, that you're protected in the midst of it all, you got to remember the care, that's always the care of a never too far away Savior. Remember, he's never far away. Somebody say he's not far from any one of us. Do you realize that we are in a predicament today? Our world is filled with sin. Everywhere you turn around, I'm seeing all kind of news clips that make us want to think everything about God. And they do that by showing bad situations in churches. Somehow or another, they'll show a fight that took place in church. You cut on the media, you see men cursing back and forth in the Lord's house, doing everything to, to try to contaminate what God is. But let me tell you that even if things broke out wrong in this house, God will take care of his own. He says here, Unto Abraham, Lot is a righteous man. And what I'm going to do is, I'm going to go down and save him. I know that there's been bad things all around him. And sometimes trouble will come in your own house. You want to throw up your hands and say, why should I keep on going? Because every time I'll try to do good, evil is always present. Can I tell you that God has already promised that he will protect you. He's promised that he will take care of you. And no matter how hard it gets, you got to know you can always be looking up to him. For the Bible said... He tried to bring them in and say, oh, you men stay in my house because what I'm going to do, I'm going to prepare a meal for you. Ain't it amazing? Have you ever noticed uh, that he was sitting out in the gate door and somehow or another he knew that these were not the men in the city. 
When you got God on your side, you got to learn how to discern who belongs to God and who belongs to the enemy. Ain't it amazing we've gotten in the Lord's house? We can't tell the righteous from the unrighteous. We can't tell those that love God from those who are just putting on the act. But I'm here to tell you, if you have the Spirit of God, God will give you what you need. Do I have a witness here? Well, he stayed there and he brought them in the house. Stayed with them, but it let me know something here. He, he needed some more growth. And they noticed the angels didn't kill him because he was weak. And the reason I say Lot was weak is because he got his own daughters and say, I'm going to give them to you if you would just leave these men alone. But when I looked at it further, I began to take another look and I heard Lot say what he was really saying is I'd rather lose my family than put my hand on God. I'd rather lose my family than for me to stop the program of God because I heard the word of God say if you lose your life for my sake you shall find it. Yeah! If you get messed up for doing what's right, sometime you gotta tell your own family, I gotta leave you because God is calling my name. Sometime you gotta tell the family, I won't, I won't stay in this mess. You can live your life when you give them up. God will take over. And ain't it amazing? God said he tried to give them his daughters. And the angels got him and said, you don't have to make a sacrifice for me. Save your daughters. Your daughters ain't the problem. But you got trouble in your home. Sin has gotten in your house. And you gonna find it out when the morning come, when the morning came. These two boys was all messed up in their mind, in their psyche, in their thinking. And God say, it's time to move. Let me close by telling you that God in his own power, he began to say, Get out of the city. No, now, when you look at Lot, Lot was getting on in age. And the Lot said, you want me to go to the mountain? But let me tell you, we'll never make it because my feet are slow. I can't move as fast as I want to. And I heard him say, if you will allow me to go, in that little city I can hide until the storm pass over every now and then God will give you a, a city of refuge that you can hide yourself until the storm pass over and you got to learn to look for a place of refuge when your burdens get heavy you gotta go to a city of refuge when your troubles are more than you can bear you got to retreat unto a place that God has designed for those that love him and I see myself with sin all around me I wonder how I'm still holding on it's because God has given me a reprieve every night then you got to look beyond yourself and say I'm not strong enough to make it to where I am but I heard the Lord say they that wait on the Lord he shall renew their strength 
Yeah, I'm gonna tell you if you are a child of the king, hold on a little while longer. Hold on, storms may rise, winds may blow, but hold on because God is about to turn things around. Yes, He is. He is about to be able to destroy all of the sin in the world. But will you be ready when the fire falls? God is about to do a great thing. And my God wants you to know it won't be long. Just a few more days, a few more rising and setting of the sun. And God's going to be able to tell you it's all over. I'm here to tell you he's my protector in my troubles. He's my protector when the storm is raging. He's your protector. Do I have anybody that say he is my hope? But I can't see my way. I hold on a little while longer. And every time I make it in this building, I see it as a city, as a refuge. I don't look at you. I don't look at others. But I look at God that's got all power in his hand. He'll shield me. He'll protect me. He'll hold me in the center of his will. Won't he do it? Won't he make a way? He will. Yeah. Yeah. He will. He will protect you. Oh, he will. He'll make a way. Oh, beloved, come on, stand with me. Stand with me, please. Please don't hear the sermon as being talked about as only homosexuality. But this text is about, in, it's about immorality. When we get to the point that we don't care until we do anything we feel we want to do. And there are a lot of us so arrogant, we don't listen to nobody. Ain't it amazing we got to the place till we don't know and we don't want those to know to know. We don't even want to hear anything that's gonna bless us or take us forward. But let me tell you, there was something with Lot here that God saw and he is only saved because he was connected to Abraham. Do you realize that some of the very people you're putting down, they are your immediaries. They are your intercessors. You're making it because somebody's praying for you. And ain't it amazing some of the very folks you're killing are the very people that's praying for you. The very people that's lifted you up before God. And I know that's right. I've heard terrible things often voiced about even myself. And they don't know how much I prayed for them. How many nights I stay awake asking God to bless their hand. But then they'll say he's nothing which doesn't bother me at all. Because they're telling the truth. In house, that is my flesh, that is no good thing. I'm only who I am because of Jesus Christ. And beloved, we're in a season to where sin is going to get protrusively worse. You got to know where you stand. And let me tell you, going to church ain't enough. You got to know the Christ of the church. 
There are some of you who think because you're coming, you're coming and you're doing well and you go to church and, and I'm active in the church. Let me tell you some activity is not necessarily the work that God needs. He needs you to be sold and dedicated to his cause. Because there are some times that God ought to call you away from church. There's sometimes he needs to speak to you when you ain't even in church. If you don't ever get happy to Sunday morning, you might be on your way to hell. I'm going to just tell it like it is. So, beloved, here we are today. It's been a long time since somebody walked down this aisle and said, I want to give my life to Jesus. Because you go to church, you feel pretty cool. And ain't it amazing? We got to the point that Christians, we got this thing that the devil has made us think that Christians don't need to repent. If you live, you better repent. Because I know you don't do everything right, and you know you don't do everything right. You're in this room today. I need you to come and say, God, here I am. You've been protecting me, and he has. In the middle of all of it. You ain't been righteous, but God's been protecting you. And the question comes now, how long? How long will you continue? And God not protect you. Does he, will he get tired? I want to take that chance today. This word comes to the church as a whole. You've been protected in the middle of all this. In the middle of COVID. In the middle of losing so much. And so many things happening. God has protected us. I want you to come today. And whatever you're going through. He's ready to bless you. I want you to come and say, God, here I am. I, I want to give you me. I realize that you've been good to me. You bless me. And in spite of the fact, you never took your hands off me. I want you to come today. Would you come? It won't always be The Lord will protect that that's concerning you soon or later you turn in my favor yes he This is the day that the Lord wants to do it for you. Come on. Come on. God wants to do something special for you. Come on. The Lord will protect that. the day that we all get ourselves together. thought there were more important things we had to do before we could give God all of us. The question is, how long do you stay away from him? What person needs the fire 
and goes and stay in the cold. It's one thing to get real hot in the fire to step outside to cool off. But what happens when we stay outside so much until now we're freezing? Some people have stepped outside of God and you're freezing. You're freezing in a place that you can't even move to get back toward the fire. God is saying today, I want you to break yourself free. You're in this room today. What service are you doing for God? And you trying to make up your own. Say, you know, I visit people sometimes. I do this sometimes. You do that on your own. But what do you do with God has commissioned and called you to do? Let me tell you, everything God calls you to do is going to be difficult and it's going to be hard sometimes. That's why you know he's called you. In spite of the fact it's difficult, he still wants to bless you. I need you to come because you need to be more than a church person. You need to be an ambassador for Christ. You need to be a person who's ready to give yourself. God, you know who I messed up. Well, God, take messed up stuff and turn it into miracles. Can you bring your mess up self to God and let God change it for you? Come on today. It won't always be like. Come on. He's ready to fix it. Come on. The Lord will protect and concern me. Come on. Listen, you can't be a professional member, just go to church, but you never meet God, you never see him. I want you to find out where you belong. Would you come? Come on. Everybody here, God loves us enough to use every one of us. And the only thing that's going to make us strong, all of us got to get involved. Would you come? We'll protect concern. more time will you give God a chance come on would you come today if you desire prayer today for whatever reason I want you to come Give your life to the Lord today. Hold your hand up. If there are anyone here with some major concerns in your life that you need God to take and fix, hold your hand up. You're here for yourself, asking God to do something mighty. I want you to believe, first of all, without faith it's impossible to please God. And secondly, God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Put that in your spirit. And we're going to believe God. All right. Amen.
Amen. Thank you. All right, well, bless your hearts. You're so glad that God is making a way. Amen. 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 That's wonderful. That's going to be all right. No, nah, this is part of the shot. You gonna, you gonna have that trouble. I don't care. It ain't gotta hit no nerve. I promise you that shot. That shot to do it. Amen. Thank you, sir. Amen. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. 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 Thank you for what the doctor said. And then the Lord says, whatever you haven't been doing, start doing it. And uh, so we all got to find ourselves going to where God would have us. Let us pray. Almighty Savior, in this moment we give you praise. We give you glory. We realize that our time is a little lengthier than what it's been. But your grace has been even greater. We ask you to help us to remind ourselves that we're going to have to take some time to find you in the purity of who you are. Please be our strength and help us to get motivated to do the things that bring righteousness in our lives. We've sinned for and we've done things that's out of order. We need your care. We need your loving. We need your presence. And Almighty Father, I pray that you forgive our sins as we bow. Every person is on this altar. Give them what they need. I know you can handle it. Nothing is too hard for you. And God, we ask you in Jesus' name to give healing, to set free, to give deliverance, and give courage, most of all, for people to walk out of their comfortable place, to walk into a place where faith will lead them and where your word will promise them that they will be successful spiritually by what you have them to do. Forgive us all, all we pray. And then see minutes together and we might be one voice for your namesake. 
Not for the many words, God, but for the seriousness of our heart. Bless us here today. And now receive our gifts that we're about to, to give as we leave this place. Bless every giver and every gift. In Jesus' name, every man. Amen. Amen. The Lord be praised. Can you praise him one more time before you go? Amen.